Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me start by thanking you for being the good follower of our programs, uh, which are done every time here at Mwimbili National Hospital. And also, I would like to address my gratitude for being the good followers of our programs through our YouTube channel. You have been wonderful since the beginning up to this moment. Uh, introducing to you, today we are launching uh, another scientific event. Uh, remember this event uh, powered by Man CMC Healthy for Change Club. Afia Kwanza Tunajari Afiako. This is a service club which is learning its activities in and out of Mwimbiri National Hospital. We are passionately dedicated uh, to bring transformations in uh, our health care system, but also to connect uh, health professionals with the community to make the good coordination, the good link between the community and health the professionals from Tanzania. Yes, uh, today uh, our theme is professionalism and the professional ethics in health care system. Uh, we have two speakers. Uh, the first speaker will share with us about the professionalism in health care system. And the second speaker will share with us about the professional ethics in health care system. Yes, now before continuing, I would like to introduce our speaker for our today program. Uh, the first speaker is Mr. Eliuluma Eliufo, who will share with us about uh, professionalism in health care system. But also, uh, our second speaker is uh, Libby White. <laughs> from New Zealand, uh, a specialized critical care nurse who is currently working there at the emergency medicine department, END, as a nurse mentor. She will share with us about the uh, professional ethics in the health care system. We are glad to have you, Libby White, and feel welcome here in our event. Yeah, now uh, without you uh, wasting our time, I would like to welcome uh, the first speaker who will share with us about the professionalism in the health care system. Remember, my name is Ruchus Philibert, a staff here at Mwimbiri National Hospital. I will be hosting this program from the beginning up to the end. Now, the, I would like to welcome now the first speaker, Mr. Eliumo Eliufo who will share with us about the professionalism in health care system. Welcome to Take Your Floor. How are you? I hope you are, you are all fine. Isn't it? Okay, now let's move to our presentation. It's all about professionalism in the healthcare industry. As introduced before, prior to this, I'm Mr. Eliuruma Eliufo, BSN, internist at Mwimbili National Hospital. And I'll be hosting uh, this pro presentation on professionalism in the healthcare industry. Now, let's start with an introduction. We all know nursing. I, I, I will go deep talking about nursing because I, I can see we are majority of us who are nursing. So I'll go deep talking about nursing. We, we know nursing. And uh, before nursing introduced to us, it was nursing as a practice. And uh, it was that nursing introduced by Florence Nightingale. That was nursing as a practice. But nowadays, due to advancement of knowledge, research, and uh, several studies, nursing has been transformed from nursing as practice to nursing as a profession. Uh, it has been transformed from nursing as a practice to nursing as a profession as it has already acquired all characteristics and all requirements for a, something to be profession. As we all know, not everything is a profession. So let's know what's the definition of professionalism. 
Professionalism can be defined as a conduct, aids, or qualities that characterize or mark a certain profession. So we know nursing nowadays is nursing is as a profession. So professionalism are those qualities that characterize or mark that professional or mark a that profession person in a particular. Also, professionalism. For it to be professionalism, it is required to have a specialized knowledge at which it took some time uh, in a recognized institution. For instance, uh, in Tanzania conduct, for something to be called a profession, has to go above two to maximum of five years uh, intensive studies. So you need to go to college, you need to go to university, you need to go to several places which are recognized institutions which provide education to acquire a certain knowledge for not less than two years, for not maximum than five years, for it to be called a profession. So not every job can be called a profession. So nursing, most of nursing, we, have, we go to school and acquire a, a, a intensive knowledge from schools for maximum two years, three years, four years, and uh, others go further for masters and the PhDs, and all these are qualities that mark a profession. And the his nursing is now a professional, not a practice as it used to be. So that's professionalism. It is qualities that characterize or mark a certain profession that is professionalism. Now. These definitions, as we have already seen it, 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 it encompasses that professionalism encompasses a number of attributes, encompasses a number of some things which without them it cannot be called professionalism. Or oh, that practice you are doing without these attributes it cannot be called professionalism. Now let's take a look to these attributes of professionalism. What are they? Attribute, attributes of professionalism. The first thing is specialized knowledge. That's for it to be called professionalism, for something you are practicing to be called that you are practicing under a professional conduct, you have to acquire a specialized knowledge. And this, uh, uh, this specialized knowledge is acquired from recognized institutions like universities and the colleges. And we know that uh, in nursing, uh, those universities and the colleges that are recognized by Tanzania Nursing and the Media Free Councils as well as uh, NACTE. So, specialized knowledge, this is the knowledge you are acquiring from school. Knowledge about nursing, knowledge about uh, behavioral science, knowledge about biochemistry, knowledge about physiology, knowledge about anatomy, knowledge about pharmacology, knowledge about microbiology, knowledge about parasitology. These are specialized knowledge to which you are supposed to acquire them so that anything you are performing under a wheel of nursing will be called that you are performing in a professionalism manner. Another thing after acquiring a specialized knowledge, then you should have competence. Not the only knowledge are measured, but how are you performing those knowledges? Remember, we, we digest our knowledges in our mind and in our brain, but we're supposed to give out the input of the digestion of our knowledge to our practice. Then what are measured through practice, it is competence. But for it to be called that nursing, you're performing it in an unprofessionalism manner, then you have to have competence. And the competence come with the practice. That's why we are not segregating uh, practice, nursing as a practice, with the nursing as a profession. We go with them together. But the good thing we have added that nursing as a profession to nursing as a practice. Then we go with the nursing as a practice and the nursing as a profession. We don't leave the profession alone and we don't leave the practice alone. We go with them together. So you need to have a competence. That's everything you are performing, you are performing with the competence and you are trusting yourself that I'm doing this with the positive outcomes and I'm doing this with the evidence-based rationale. Another thing which is attribute of professionalism, it is honesty and integrity. Most of people who are performing under professionalism or who are professions, they don't not lie. 
They don't give a lie to anything they are doing. If they have been caught with something that it is malpractice, they do report and agree that this uh, I, perform, I, I, I perform this by myself and it is okay like this, so let's correct it as a mistake. But they do not lie. So you need to have this character or you need to have this attribute of honest and integrity so as in everything you are performing, it will be under a shadow of nursing as a professional and you will be performing it in a professionalism manner. Another thing which is attribute of professionalism is uh, accountability. For those who are professional, for those who they perform their action in a professional manner, they are accountable for their action. They are accountable for their words. They are accountable for each and everything they are doing. That's, I am the one who did this. And I did this because of this and this and this and this. Whatever the circumstances will come about, but I am the one who did this. I know what I'm doing. I have evidence on what I'm doing. So I will be accountable for anything which will happen. That's accountability mark a, a completion of specialized in knowledge, com com competence, and honest. That's you are agreeing, I will be accountable for this action I'm doing. That means you are you, are, you have honesty in yourself that you don't lie and you have competence means you are trusting in yourself that I'm doing this and a positive outcome will occur and you have knowledge on it. As we all know, a, a bus conductor cannot cannulate a patient because he or she, she, don't have, uh, she doesn't have that knowledge of cannulation. But a nurse can cannulate a patient because he has that specialized knowledge on cannulation and he, he or she have that, she has that uh, competence on cannulation. And if anything acquired, for instance, that cannulation lead into sepsis and sepsemia. So she can agree that I am the one who performed this. Maybe due to some, uh, some, some circumstance around, I performed this in a septic manner. That's why it's leading to sepsis. And at the end of, 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 of all those stuffs, he said that, or she said that I am accountable for what I perform here. So after completion of those things, then you are coming to perform something as a profession. Or you are, you are performing nursing in a professionalism manner. Self-regulation. This is the attribute of professionalism. Self-regulation means that a nurse who is performing nursing as a profession or in a professionalism manner means that he or she will perform all activities with regardless of the pressure around him or her. Self-regulation. That he will give out the positive outcomes in everything he or she is performing regardless of the pressure around him or her. Not that uh, 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 we did this because we don't have instrument, no. I utilize the available instruments to give the positive outcomes like this and this and this. That's self-regulation. I did this and this to give the positive outcome regardless that I was under pressure of something of this and this and this and this. We all know that we are all human beings. Nurses are not robots, are human beings. Sometimes they get tired, sometimes they get exhausted, sometimes they get stressed with their family stress. But nursing as a profession, you need to perform all things in nursing regardless the pressure around you that means self-regulation so to be as a nursing profession or to perform nursing in a professionalism manner we need to have specialized knowledge we all have it we need to have competence uh, i cannot conclude that we all have competence so everyone knows on, on it that you have competence or not we need to have honesty and account of, or, and integrity that we need to agree that's we are supposed to do this and this and this. We are not supposed to lie in anything we are doing. Remember, we are lying. Sometimes, uh, sometimes people lie, do lie. I, I cannot uh, disagree that. Sometimes people do lie. But you are lying because the patient, lying on that body, or you, the patient you are providing a service, maybe he or she is into your relative, she is into your mother, she is into your father. But if that patient is your mother or your father, I don't think if you lie to anyone that I didn't do this. You will say it loudly that I give this injection, but it gives this adverse reaction. Let's save our mother, because he or she is your, uh, she is your mother. That's you can, you can give out clear. That's it. I give you pethidine, regardless it was prescribed morphine. And this pethidine gives this adverse reaction. Please, let's save our mother. 
let's save my mother, please. Because she is your mother. But if that patient isn't your relative or is not close your relative, then sometimes people can lie. But I didn't do this. I didn't. Maybe someone else. But if you perform something in a professionalism manner, or if you are a real profession in nursing, you need to stay to, to tell the truth that I did this and this and this, and I'm accountable for this action. That's professionalism. So these are attributes which contribute in uh, completion of the uh, definition of professionalism. So now let's know uh, how can we exhibit professionalism. How can we show professionalism in our working environment to our co-worker, to our, our, our relative, to our client and our customers? We all know those uh, attributes of professionalism. So it's likely that uh, some of, of attributes you have already performed them to, uh, to your client and your patient, but some of them maybe you need to know them and understanding them better. So let's know how can you exhibit. Uh, for those attributes, you need to work with them so that to perform a professionalism. It's very easy and very simple. You need to do this. You know those at attributes of professionalism. Then you need to take them as they are. Let's go back to this slide. Uh, these five attributes of professionalism. Then you need to go one by one. If you go with those or all those five, then you'll be uh, confused. You need to go one by one. Then uh, maybe uh, uh, I, I like to start with the specialized knowledge. Uh, maybe I'm in a word, I'm in a, a surgical word, a surgical word. Okay. Then I want to have specialized knowledge on everything concerning surgery. Then I will have to find the journals regarding surgery, recent research regarding surgery, books of surgery. To read all about management of a certain uh, surgery, to read all pre-operative procedures for a certain surgery and the post-operative procedures for a certain surgery, and to master this area. After you have found yourself that you have mastered the own specialized knowledge, and you see yourself that I have added something here. We all go to schools, but in uh, in healthcare industry, things are updated daily. People they do research daily, so things are come up new daily. For instance. We all know that uh, we, uh, yesterday we had a talk with uh, certain doctors from Moy, and they give us a, a, a brief on a, a, a recent journal published about the use of metronidazole to kill, uh, use of metronidazole as a topical agent to kill topical microbes. And the people, they perform their research to find out is it a metronidazole can kill a topical microbes? They found us it's new. So there is no use, there is no any, any, other, any other requirement for using metronidazole as we are thinking that we are killing microbes to a wound. People, they perform the research. But if you, if you, you, you are disagreeing with that and you think that it is true that metronidazole kill microbes topically, then you need to go down and do a, another research so as to reject the recent research which is published. Then that is a specialized knowledge. You need to go update with the things which are coming updated. Nurses nowadays are performing so many researches. We have a certain nurse known as Professor Tumbweni. He has already performed 40 researches in nursing, and he published all of them in the internet. So if you go through the internet, you will come up with more than 100 researches performed in nursing. And those are researches are recent. So you will have specialized knowledge on a thing that you are performing in your world. Maybe you are in a medical world, you will have specialized knowledge in all things that are concerning with the internal medicine. Maybe you are in a surgical ward, you will have a specialized knowledge. You are supposed to have a specialized knowledge in all things that are concerning with the surgery. Maybe you are at maternity, you need to know all things that are concerning with the obstetric and gynecology. After having a specialized knowledge and you see yourself that in these attributes I have mastered, then you go to competence. That for all those things that I have read in um, articles, journals, and the research, let me go and practice them to a patient. We, know, we, do, we are not supposed to, to write to our patients, our patient our client. But if you are, not, you, are, you, are, you are going to perform something new, do not be afraid. You just go down and you read the articles, the research and the studies, then you go to a patient to practice that something. Uh, another thing, be polite. Use polite language. You, you, professionals, professionals, they don't talk harsh. They don't use uh, uh, bad language or insults. Those are professionals. 
but we had a certain kasumba, uh, I don't know kasumba in English, but let me use it as it is. We have a certain kasumba that is rotating or circulating around the communities. That's manesi wanaluga mbaya. But that is, I, I call it kasumba because I know na, most of nurses who are quite good in a, in a performing things in a professional manner. But it is a kasumba because it's something that is circulating around the communities and the community trusts it that only doc doctors, they do talk polite to our patients, but nurses, they do talk and, uh, with that insult language and the bad language to our patients and the relatives. That is kasumba that is circulating to, to most of our patients. But we need to, how, how can we tackle this, this kasumba to the community? We need to do something that this kasumba will disappear to the community. Means that when you are talking to a patient, to a relative, you need to use a polite language. I, I love this thing has been established in World 3, my seller. They have a location of customer service. Customer service means that you are locating one nurse to provide customer services for relatives that are coming to visit their patients. Means that if there will be a report that there is a one relative have been insulted by a nurse, then that's somebody who is in a location of customer service, he or she will be accountable for it. So if you are accountable for a certain action, then you need to perform it in a good manner. So if you are in a location of customer service, then you have to use the polite language to every relative that are coming to you. That's a good thing, I think, which can be disseminated to other words, and it's a good thing to do. Then you will solve this kasumba of manesi wanaluga mbaya. Another thing that you need to show your uh, 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 professionalism, have the tools that you need. In anything you are going to do, have things ready first, and then you're going to perform it. Not like, I'm going to dress a wound, then, oh, I have forgot a cheat of forceps. Oh, I have forgot this and this and this. Have the things that you need to do in any action. Prepare yourself ready, then you go to war. Not, no, no any soldier that can go to war and forget a, a rifle back to, back to, back to, back to home. No any soldier can go that way. But if you're going to perform something, then you prepare everything ready and you go to perform that action. Uh, let's go to fundamental characteristics of a profession. The first characteristics, it is great responsibility. For a nursing to be a professional, it has a great responsibility to the client and, 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 and our, 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 our patients. It has a great responsibility. Given this inheritance obligation, professional work typically involves circumstances where careless and inadequate skills and the breach of ethics will be significant in making the client and the fortunes. So it means that nurses, we need to perform every action we are performing under code of conduct, professional uh, code of ethics and the professional code of conduct. That have been established by Tanzania Nursing and the Medieval Free Council, as well as American Nursing Association. Those code of conduct we needed to work with the, with the following them. We are not supposed to go that in our actions, uh, not in line with the code of conduct or professional code of conduct. Then it does imply we have great responsibility. That's a profession. And if you're performing any action following code of conduct and a professional code of conduct, that means you're performing something in a professionalism manner. Another thing is accountability, and I have talked much about this thing, but it's the characteristics, it's a huge characteristics of who, and something to be a professional. If you perform something in a professionalism manner, then you are accountable for that action. And you have to declare that I'm accountable for this action I'm doing. Another characteristic is that professional is supposed to base on specialized and theoretical knowledge, as well as nursing. Nursing, that's established by Nightingale, Florence Nightingale was that a nursing of practice. That's Nightingale took uh, sisters, Catholic sisters, and they go to dress wound for those soldiers who have been, uh, been injured in a war. That's the only thing that they were taught is that go to that wound and they clean that wound and they create a clean environment around that patient. He or she will heal by himself or herself. That was a nursing as a practice. That you are doing something. It's, it's just an operating procedure you are doing. You don't have a specialized knowledge on it. But for a nursing to be transformed from a nursing as a practice to a nursing as a profession, it has to be a, based on a specialized and a theoretical knowledge. So from, from, 
from from Nightingale, we came to Ages and Ages. We met Deoret Deoret Theorem, uh, Deoret Dorot, and uh, others uh, theory, the philosophers from nursing who develop different theories in nursing education. So we use those uh, theories in nursing education to transform nursing from practice to a nursing as a profession. And nowadays we are adding even more from those researches that are performed by nurses and uh, different people who are contributing to nursing education. Another thing is institutional preparations for all those knowledges that are, are, are given to nurses are supposed to be given from a recognized institution. That is why all those colleges that are given out nursing education are registered or under uh, Tanzania Nursing and the Midway Free Counseling. It means that what they are providing is a real quiet profession because they have been registered in an institution that is uh, legal. Autonomy. Autonomy is a characteristic of, 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 of profession. That's in anything you are doing because you have specialized knowledge you have competence, you are honest and you have integrity in yourself, you are accountable for the action you are doing and you are self-motivated, self-regulated. Then you, professional gives you autonomy to perform actions. You are not supposed to perform action if you are really competent in a certain action. Not stop to, you are not supposed to perform action under a certain supervision. Let's do this, do this, do this, do this. Or not only to follow doctor's orders. In autonomous actions you are doing, you are not supposed just to follow doctor's orders. That's uh, Dr. Flan has said this and this and this, and you're supposed to do this and this and this. And you see the condition of the patient, it's like this, supposed to be done this way. Then because you are just following order and you are not adhering to this autonomy, which allows you with your competence to do things with, uh, while you are seeing a patient, a patient uh, and he or she is in this state, then you will not perform nursing as a profession. We all know limiting the boundaries of for our practice. And if you are within the limited boundary of your practice, then you are supposed to do that thing autonomously. Not only to follow what is prescribed. You see that this patient has pain, severe pain, and you are a nurse who stay with the patient 12 hours. But a doctor who is staying with the patient just two or three hours has just prescribed, uh, let's say, diclofenac. Diclofenac, a patient has got a severe pain and uh, he or she got uh, peptic ulcer disease and we know that diclofenac is contraindicated to peptic ulcer disease because they are, all, they are also human beings. Sometimes they do mistake. We are not supposed to rely on them. But you have specialized knowledge and a competence and you know that diclofenac is contraindicated to this patient. You cannot give that patient. You will give that patient diclofenac only if you are not a profession. Only if you are just in performing nursing as a practice. But if you're performing nursing as a profession, then you will have to question that why diclofenac to a patient with the POD. And the all studies and research show that these medicines are contraindicated to patient with peptic cancer disease. And I know this patient, because I've stayed with this patient, and he or she, this patient got severe pain. Why diclofenac? Why can't we go to morphine? You see? So that is where you will be, you'll be performing nursing as a profession in an autonomous manner, not only to follow doctor's orders or uh, what it has been prescribed to, 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 to the patient. Another thing you need to perform everything to a patient as he or she is a client, not a customer. If you will perform action to a, a patient as a client, not a, 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 a customer, then you will do things in a good way. Why? Why am I saying this? For instance, uh, I will just use this as an, an example, but I have never met this in any place. I'll just use an example so you could understand. There are those patients from NHIF, and you have NHIF with the different categories, brown card and whatever, and you will have those uh, patients who have been exempted by uh, Social, social workers have been exempted from payment, and we have those patients that are public, are cost sharing. And we know that if I do this, uh, there is something I'm going to get from this patient. But to this patient, it is nothing I'm going to get. Because she has been exempted from all payment. Yes, I'm doing things, and after she recovered, she go back home free. That will be, you will perform nursing and treating patients as customers. 
It is as if those patients are coming to you buying a sugar. If you are performing nursing to patient as your client, then you will treat equally the patient with the NHIF card, brown card, and the patient who has been exempted from hospital bill. You perform those actions equally, then that is where you perform nursing as a profession. It's difficult, I know, but it is easy if you are in a profession. If you are in a nursing as a practice, it's difficult to you, I know. But if you are a nursing as a profession with the practice, then it is very easy to you. That I will do equal to this patient, the same I will do equal to this patient. Direct working relationship with client as well as with co-workers. And the ethical constraints. This is the eight characteristics of professions. Ethical constraints. We have... Uh, Professional Code of Conduct, someone will come and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and talk of, on it. Code of Ethics, non maleficence beneficence, uh, veracity, fidelity, autonom auto autonomy, confidentiality, accountability. You see? All those things are Code of Ethics. Then you need to perform everything within that limit. Not just, I have a counseling this patient, and I have tested her blood, and I have found that she is infected with the uh, human uh, uh, HIV. She is infected with HIV. She is HIV positive. Then you go to your fellow and tell, hey, do you know that patient? The white one, yeah, with the wig you know, on her head. She is infected. She is HIV positive. Then that is his profession. You are not adhering to code of ethics. You are not adhering to code of ethics of confidentiality. You are not supposed to spread information of the patient. If you know by it, uh, you know it by yourself, then you need to use that information to provide a care to a patient. Not to use that information as a story-making headline to your fellows. That is where I will be adhering to code of ethics. I know it's difficult to adhere in code of ethics and the code of conduct, but it is the thing that you are supposed to do all as nurses so as to be performing nursing as a profession. Importance, a important distinction between professionals and non-professionals. Now let's cross-check. After knowing all those attributes of professional and uh, uh, attributes of professionalism, knowing the definition of professionalism, I know this is a place, it is already being to you that you are judging yourself. Am I performing nursing as a profession? Or am I just performing nursing as a practice? That's nursing of Florence Nightingale. That's where you, that's is, here is where you are judging yourself. Now let's cross-check some, some hints that will help you while you're judging. Profession, professional make deliberate choice. Where others uh, have choices made for them, or they simply react to what they come on their way. In any action you're performing to a patient, those who are professional, they do make a deliberate choice. That I have to do, I suppose to do this, not I have to do. I suppose to do this. But for those who are performing nursing not in a professional manner, they are just reacting on what is coming on their way. But this is a patient file. Uh -huh. And uh, Dr. Blah Blah has prescribed this and this. Uh -huh. I don't need to assess the condition of the patient. I go direct to this, pres prescribe the things, medications and the all fluids, then I'm done. But a nurse who is, who, is, who is making a deliberate choice of how am I going to treat this patient, how am I going to provide a care to this patient, first, I have to assess this patient's condition. I have received the report of this patient. But before doing this, let me assess the uh, patient condition. Oh, she is like this. She has severe pain. Oh, at her back, she has bed sores. Ah, okay. During wet round, I will talk with doctors to prescribe maybe uh, mepirocin or Silverex so that we could uh, have this bed sore subsiding. But that's nursing. That's who is doing just the nursing as a practice. He will just look to a patient. Oh, you are doing well. I can see at your face. Okay. During wet round, just waiting doctors to tell you, bring me that stapler. Uh, bring me that washing machine. Bring me continuation sheet. You will just stay there as a messenger. After, after the end of the word round, you are just taking a patient file. Uh -huh. Let me transfer this to a, 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 a round book. After there, down there. Take file to farmers. Medication has already given to from farmers. Okay. You, wake up. Take Panadol, Tramadol, blah, 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 blah. And then those pressure swords at her back are still growing up. At the end of the day, you will come to, to know that the, the patient has pressure swords at the back. It's already, it's already been maybe uh, excessively. 
maybe they have started to, to be infected. So you are now going to treat another thing. You are now going to treat sepsis. After knowing that this patient temperature is rising uh, uncontrollably, then you are, you, are, you are assessing the patient in knowing that she has uh, bed sores for a long period of time and those bed sores have developed sepsis. That is where you are now starting performing nursing as a profession. I say, oh, doctor, this patient has got bed sores and they have sepsis. It's now a, a wound, not a sore, it's just a wound now. Let's do something. But if you, you were doing nursing as a profession, that's, those bed sores will, were, were supposed to subside even before reaching a state that that bed sores will be a wound. So you will have supposed to make a deliberate choice, how am I going to meet this client needs? As we all nurses, we are staying a long period of time with patients. We know patients better. We need to know these patients and make a deliberate choice. Professionals afford luxury making a deliberate choice because they have deliberate preparation. Before coming to a job, you have deliberate preparation. And those deliberate preparation involve uh, specialized knowledge that you have go around journals and the articles study different things and you know that this is supposed to be performed like this and this and this. And when you are making choice, you are making choice a route to follow while you have background knowledge on it. I have already spoken on this. And uh, another thing, which differentiate those who are professional and those who are non-professional is that professional is seldom caught off balance. That's professional, those who are professional, if they meet a certain thing that is out of their control, they can change their mind and they make a decision rapidly to meet a patient's need. But those who are just a, a, a non-professional, they can see that this patient is gasping. They, they don't even think of initiating CPR. You're just going direct. What, what is the name of doctor on call? I have to call this doctor. What is the name of doctor on call? Oh, doctor, blah, blah, blah. The patient's condition has changed. Maybe that doctor, he, he or she is on his or her kijiwe outside of the bill. And they just tell you, oh, I'm at a cafeteria, I'm coming. From that route, from his or her kijiwe to that what, maybe he will meet the patient is already done. But if you, are, you have competence and specialized knowledge in yourself, you will see that this patient is gasping. I need first to suck him or her to know if he or she has secretions. Initiate maybe six liters of oxygen and let's start CPR, just compressions. Let's give her a positive pressure with the ample bag on her nose. All those things are supposed to be ready prepared in your mind. And if you meet a certain action, then you have those actions in your mind. That is, ha, I have to do this and this and this and this and this to sell this patient. Then after knowing, after seeing that that patient has, uh, has been resumed and starting breathing spontaneously, that is where we're going to call that doctor. Hey doctor, uh, patient condition has changed and we have stabilized her, so please come and review that patient. That's a good thing we're supposed to do and all people will appreciate that nursing, nurses are doing something. So now let's go faster on do's and don't in professionalism. That's what you're supposed to do and what you're supposed not to do in a, uh, so that you will exhibit in professionalism. Another thing, uh, the first thing in do's and don't uh, in professionalism, make it a priority to be on time. To be on time implying that you love and you care what you are doing. To be late at a job implying that you don't love and you don't care what you are doing. Remember that this is the job that's providing food to your, to your kids and your relatives. This is the job that's providing money that's add some gas, gasoline to your car. This is the job that's add you some money in your businesses. So you need to love it and care it the most. And if you love this job and care it the most, then you have to make a priority to be on time. That's supposed to be at job at uh, maybe seven o'clock. Okay, then I'm um, from Chanika. From Chanika, I have to know the route from Chanika to Mwibili cost how long. And I have to estimate that if it is one hour from Chanika to Mwibili, then I have to walk up from five. From five, I will prepare myself uh, up to maybe six. From six, then I will start moving to job at one. At seven, I know I'll be at job then make a priority to be on time. Don't be a grumpy. Grumping, grumping by definition is a person who is every day annoyed 
If you look him or her the face, that he is annoyed daily. Whether you are, you are all happy at a, at a circumstance you are doing, or you are unhappy, but he will look unhappy every day. Every day he or she is coming to a job, she is unhappy or he is unhappy. That's it. We call him a grumpy. You're coming with wrinkles on your face. Maybe you have all those things from your home. Then you need to differentiate that I'm at a job. Then I have to leave all my stresses and everything back from home at the door before entering at work. Then at work, it's your new environment. That's not your home. You don't have bed there. You don't have your cupboard there. You don't have your kitchen there. That's a, a, a work. Then you need to leave everything back from your home. Family stresses, stresses from your husband, stress from your wife, stress from your children. Then you need to leave them at the door and entering at a job with a smiling face. That's I'm going to a place that is keeping me happy today. That is giving me a, a, a petrol for my car. That is giving me a, even money for school fees of my kids. Arise us, Bui. Nina is a lady. Nina Toka, New Zealand. Na, currently, I'm working in the emergency department, as Rishis introduced. I'm very proud to be working with the Tanzanian nurses, and I just want to say I think you're all doing a fantastic job in caring for the patients. So, Hungera. Thank you. Um, I am going to speak to the topic today of professional ethics in the healthcare system. So, the objectives um, you can see here, we look at what the definition of ethics is, review the TNMC code of ethics, and also discuss some ethical dilemmas. I really invite you to um, share any stories that you would like to, feel comfortable to make any contributions. Um, so, we start with the definition as always. The definition of ethics are moral principles that govern a person's behaviour or the conducting of an activity. So this is from the Oxford Dictionary and um, these are all the rules that guide us in our work and in our life. Normally the word ethics is treated as a plural, so there's more than one um, principle that we adhere to when thinking about ethics. Ethics are not optional in medicine. They are an essential and integral part of healthcare. We, every day, are faced with ethical situations and we have to make ethical decisions. So, as healthcare professionals, it's really important for us to understand why we're making these decisions and how to make the decisions most effectively. I just wanted to see if anyone recognises this list. Maybe take a minute to read through and see if you can think of this, where this list of um, attributes is from. Um, we'll talk about it later on, so I hope you'll all recognise it when we get to it a little bit later. Uh, when you see these slides with the little ethics logo in the corner, that's indicating that I would like you to be involved in some discussion. So I just wanted to share some ethical dilemmas with you and to get you to think and give your opinion if you feel comfortable. So this is the first one. Um, a patient, Mr O, has just had a CT scan which shows a large cancerous growth in his abdomen with metastases in his lymph nodes and liver. His son is a doctor and comes to ask you the results. Question number one, do you tell the son the results before you tell the patient? Question number two, if you tell the son the results, he then asks you not to tell the patient that he is dying. Do you respect the son's wishes? Does anyone sh um, have a, an opinion they'd like to share about these, either of these questions? Do you think it's okay to tell the, to tell the son the results of the patient scan before you tell the patient? Yes? No? Yeah? The, the information? Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Geoffrey Teller, BSN3. I would like to answer question number one. Uh, 
this patient is diagnosed with cancer and his son is a doctor. Uh, before talking to the son, in professional manner, it is not ethical. You have to tell the patient the truth and not the son first. So you have to tell the mother first, then you will respect the decision of the mother and not to do what the son wants. And in number two, it, it is not the son who is diagnosed with cancer, but the mother. So, respecting the son decision is not the right way. In this manner is that you have to listen to the patient and not the patient relatives. Thank you. Asante sana. In regard to this question, the nurse should first think and assess the condition of the patient. Maybe the patient is not able to respond, is very sick, so the son can stand on behalf of the patient. The good patient maybe is unconscious, cannot respond. And if the patient is able to decide or to listen to you, you have to discuss the patient first. If it's not, son can take it, charge. Thank you. It's interesting how we get to the point to make these decisions, and I think it's the it's ethics that are guiding us to in nursing to make these decisions about what our priority is, which in this case and in all cases is the patient. The pa our patient is the number one person that we're thinking about. The family and the relatives all come in to um, influence the care that is given to that patient, but our number one priority is to the patient. So thank you very much. I, I agree with your answers, absolutely. So uh, this slide is telling us about what ethics are not. Um, they're not the same as feelings, they sh they, or they're not the same as emotion. They shouldn't be a response to an emotion. They are not involving religion. We all have different religious backgrounds and different religious beliefs. Decisions that we make about patients' care can be influenced by religion, but ethics are not based in religion. It's also, ethics are not the same as following the law. The law is very prescriptive. If you do this, this will be the consequence. Healthcare is not like that. We, we can try to offer a treatment, but we don't always know if it will work for that patient or not. So it's not the same as the law. Um, also, it's not the same as following culturally accepted normalities. It's not the same as utumaduni. Sometimes just because what our father did or our grandfather did doesn't mean that that's what we should do. Science, as my colleagues have been discussing, science and research it changes the way that we see things and education progresses the care that we're able to deliver. Um, also, ethics are not science. There's no scientific base um, for ethics. However, ethics are um, moral principles. Um, they pull together all the principles from our morals to form ethics. They are what is good and bad, and they are what is right and wrong. However, good and right can shift from one patient to another. What is good and right for um, the first patient may not be good and right for the second patient. One patient may need to be offered treatment for their cancer, whereas another patient may be too far down their cancer journey and may need to be offered um, comfort and pain relief and other um, support therapies. So all these ethical decisions that we're making might not be the same for each patient. You have to uh, individually assess. Um, and because it's based on a system of values, every patient's values must also be taken into account. Um, 
Ethics are not universal also. They depend on the subculture within the society. An ethical code in our workplace is not the same as an ethical code in um, a hotel industry. Um, then we look at medical ethics. Medical ethics are a practical application of moral standards that are for the benefit of the patient. As a healthcare worker, you make choices that must always keep the patient at the centre and ensure that the patient's best interests are maintained. You have to be aware of the patient and their family's wishes in order to make the right decision for each patient. You have to use the ethics while staying within the law. For example, in some countries, it's, or in all countries, it's illegal to murder somebody, but in some countries, it's okay to um, euthanasia is legal. So people can be assisted to die in a safe way that's controlled and regulated um, so for, their, for their own comfort purposes. However, that's not legal in all countries. So uh, the ethics and the laws um, vary. Um, so then we come to the TNMC, the Code of Ethics and Professional Conduct, which is guiding us all in our practice. Um, they say the definition of ethics is that a formal statement by a group that is established and prescribes moral standards for behaviours of that group. Initially in Tanzania, the Code of Ethics and Etiquette was adapted from the International Council of Nurses. Um, and then in 2002, the Ministry of Health adapted that again and the TNMC took that on and developed their own professional conduct and ethics code. So this code applies to all registered nurses and midwives in the public and private health sectors and it complements existing laws, regulations, guidelines and any other codes guiding and regulating the standards of behaviour in nursing and midwifery practice. So the purpose of this code is to guide us to attain acceptable standards expected of us when caring for our patients and to guide us in a changing world of education, practice, research, leadership and management and the need for us to change and improve the delivery of healthcare. As nursing research advances, we must change our practice to ensure we stay current and keep up with the recommended best practice so we deliver the highest standard of patient care. And we know how to advise and educate our patients about their healthcare and management issues. Um, so the code um, helps us with all these decisions. The guiding principles uh, of the um, TNMC is what we we saw before, and I hope everybody recognised um, these however many seven principles that we're all guided by. So um, respect for human life and humankind and life. Um, obtaining consent before we provide care, so ensuring the patients understand what we're about to do for them and to them and make sure that we ask them and involve them in the decision. Is it okay for me to put the cannula in your right hand or would it be better in your left hand? Ask them and involve them so they get to have some control over their care. Um, maintaining pre professional competence and advancement. We've just heard a lot about professionalism and how to achieve that. Um, we have to be responsible and accountable for our acts. We have to be trustworthy and exercise fairness, which comes down to um, being honest and trustworthy um, and, and giving our patients correct information. We also have to collaborate with others and act as part of a team. This healthcare system is supported by so many different pieces of the puzzle. We work together with doctors and healthcare attendants and um, cleaners and people cooking food and um, people driving the trucks in to repair the buildings and the air conditioner um, guys that come to clean our air conditioning. All these people are working for the benefit of the patient. We, we have to work with each other, communicate with each other for the benefit of our patients. Okay, you can't just pretend it didn't happen and move on to the next patient and hope that nothing happens. As a professional and use it under the code of ethics, you have to be honest to that patient and you have to disclose what happened. We're all humans, we make mistakes. And it's way worse if this woman dies from your medication mistake 
than if you are honest and honest with yourself and do the right thing for the patient. It's not easy. It's hard to admit that you made a mistake. It's really hard. It's hard to tell the patient. It feels so bad. But it's really important because it's the right thing to do. So, an ethical code can describe the attitudes that are shared by healthcare workers and can be immensely valuable and influential. But what it cannot do is provide certain answers that for the many ethical problems encountered in the course of medical practice. I'm sure you can all think of ethical situations, dilemmas that you've had in your practice, and um, you can think of how um, you've had discussions with your nursing colleagues, your medical colleagues, the families and patients of how we come to the right answer, the best thing to do for this patient. Okay, ethical dilemma number three. Please feel free to share your answer. Um, you notice a work colleague is unsteady on his feet, slurring his words and smells of alcohol. He's preparing to insert a cannula and then administer IV medication to a patient. What would you do? Would you go and have your breakfast? <laughs> you'd all use your ethics and your moral principles and stop this nurse from being anywhere near a patient. I hope that you go and talk to the nurse and say, um, can I please see you in a private area and talk with that nurse and say, ask them, have, is there, have they been drinking alcohol? I've noticed that you're not looking as good as you normally do. Um, you smell like alcohol, is there something going on, can we talk about it and then get their side of the story and then perhaps suggest that it's time for them to go home that day. They shouldn't be caring for the patients. You have to prevent any harm from coming to the patients by stopping your colleague in that situation. So, to summarise, ethical codes give shape and structure to our moral environment and summarise our ethical position while leaving ethical responsibility with the individual practitioners. Looked at it in this way, individual variation and personal issues can be taken into account. Um, it can, ethical codes can facilitate the discussion of ethical issues in difficult cases and distinctive ethical positions can be established and argued, leading to broader and more secure moral conclusions. So we can see from all these um, guiding principles and codes that they cannot come up with a single answer that can be applied to every single patient. You have to take into you have to be guided by the principles and take into account the patient's wishes, the family's wishes, and the the best treatment or course of action for that patient, which sometimes be, might be not to, to deliver any treatment. Um, be innovative and forward thinking. I think most Tanzanian nurses are already forward thinking and innovative. You can all solve problems of equipment that you can't find or that's broken. You figure out a way to make something new out of something old and find solutions to problems. And every day, um, I learn about how to do that better. We also need to be forward thinking and to look to the future of how healthcare will be in this country and to keep ourselves and our um, knowledge and information moving forward too. And all these things will help us to maintain high standards of patient care. If you um, have all these qualities and do all these things, they will make you a great nurse with fabulous ethics. So I'd just like to finish with this saying. Um, the world is moved along not only by the mighty shoves of its heroes, but also by the aggregate of the tiny pushes of each honest worker. What it's saying is that there might be some big people, hospital executive directors that make huge decisions and change the vision of healthcare, but every day, every decision that you make as a nurse makes a huge difference in the health and the well-being of your patients. So I encourage you to keep up the great work and keep being 
wonderful professional nurses with great ethics. So thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, White, for the wonderful presentation. Uh, it's time to ensure ethics for the benefit of our patients and for the betterment of our health services. We are delivering to our patients in our health care system. Uh, the world is moved along, not only by the match shelves of, the, of, the, of its heroes, but also by the aggregate of tiny pushes of each honest worker, Ellen Keller, the inspiration which was prepared by our second speaker, Libby White. We are proud of you to be the part of our today program and hope everyone here has enjoyed and learned everything you shared with us in relation to your area you are addressing for our professional ethics in health care system. Now, let's join our hands together for our second speaker, Libby White from New Zealand. Thank you, thank you. Now, it's time for discussion. If is there anyone who wants to share something in relation to the area addressed by our second speaker, Libby White, please. This is your chance. We have two chances. Please, anyone who wants to share something in relation to the area addressed by our second speaker, please, this is your chance. You can raise your hand, then I will bring the mic to you. Anyone, please? Oh, wow, thank you. Welcome at the front. I can say congratulations for this presentation, which has been conducted today. But my, for myself, I have two, one question and one comment. The first question I would like to know, is this presentation based on the customer care or even other areas will be touched later on? maybe experience on the management of certain disease. It could be even better if we could just mix the customer care and the other conditions in relation to the, our department and professional career. Yeah. And uh, another thing I would like, if one day we would go or visit the areas to see if this we are getting today or the past days will be uh, kept into practice to see if just minor research. Because what you are talking is very, very useful to us, we nurses. It's very nice. If we are there too, we'll be a good, uh, good nurses. But I'm worried if what we are getting is what we are doing. And uh, you can get something here, and uh, if you go there, you find different, uh, something different. But if someday, one day, we come here and uh, present on the findings you found after this presentation, and then we share, it will be very nice. Otherwise, it is very, very useful things. This presentation will uh, just uh, activate our career especially for today. In fact, I was very, very interested on how Rob was talking about uh, ethics, and uh, the first presenter was just <laughs> very wonderful things he did. Uh, for that, I would like to congratulate you and to congratulate the floor. Those nurses have many things to do at their work, but they are here to listen, and it's just to to, to make them advance and to strengthen their competence. And I think the later, the later on will be very, very good nurses at our working place. Thank you very much and keep it on. Thank you. Well, thank you. Let's join our hands together for her contribution. Thank you, our senior nurse. We really appreciate your contribution. Very, very helpful. Okay, now in a summary, uh, today we discussed about the professionalism and the professional ethics 
in the care system. Uh, among of the very important uh, to take on is that uh, a professional demonstrates specialized skills uh, and the master skill demonstrates strictness and the moral codes, commitment for continual learning, self-regulation, accountability, humble, confidence, look smart, and don't be a grant. The word of our first speaker, <laughs> Mr. Eriomo Eriofo. Thank you. Uh, remember, these programs are powered by Man City MC Healthy for Change Club. Afia Kwanza, Tunajaria Afia Yako. We are dedicated passionately to bring transformations in our health care system and connecting uh, the community with our health professionals. Thank you for listening to us professionally. That's mark at the end of our program for today. See you then.